How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and if you're interested in circuit bending, 3D printing, or synthesizers, then this video about the Poly 555 is for you. The Poly 555 is the latest 3D printed synth to come from Oskitone, and if you've done any circuit bending or synthesizer design in the past, you'll know exactly why this is so funny. This synth uses a separate 555 timer for each note on its keyboard, so you have 20 individual circuits that are running simultaneously. It's sort of the synthesizer equivalent of having a different engine for each wheel of your car. Is it practical? Not really. Is it a ton of fun? Absolutely. The Poly 555 makes a great weekend project. The case and keys are fully 3D printed, while the circuit board has to be soldered and tested by the user. I bought the kit version of the Poly 555, which comes with all the individual components bagged and ready for soldering and assembly. This kit has hundreds of solder joints, so it's definitely more of an intermediate project. I wouldn't really recommend it to somebody who's never used a soldering iron before. That being said, if you have a little bit of experience, it's a lot of fun to build. The overall assembly and soldering process is laid out start to finish in a very detailed guide available on Oskitone's site. And what I really appreciate about this guide is it walks you through the process first wiring up the power switch and the power LED, and then making one of the discrete circuits. This way, you sort of see any problems you're going to run into before you finish the entire thing, so you can troubleshoot as you go. Each note is tuned individually, using a trim pot that's attached to the individual circuits. I used a website called Flute Tunes, which allowed me to visualize the waveform, see the frequency, and tune the note simultaneously. Just like the circuit assembly, assembling the 3D printed components of the Poly 555 is a really easy process if you follow along with the guide. There are a few square nuts that are included, which are used as threaded inserts, so when you assemble the Poly 555, you don't have to worry about stripping out the plastic. This makes assembly really easy and straightforward, and it's really satisfying to put it all together. The acrylic screen attaches to the top cover of the Poly 555, and this is my favorite part of the assembly process. There's just something really satisfying about looking at the circuit that you just built. This was really my only complaint about the previous Oskitone synth. It looks amazing, but you have to open it up to show off the circuit. I had a lot of fun putting the circuit together, but I felt like I wanted to share that with people, and I found myself always popping it open. Now the circuit is clearly visible under the acrylic panel, so it's a little bit easier to show off. So, what does it sound like? Exactly like what you would expect. It's a bunch of 555 timers all wired together. The Poly 555 has a hole in the back of the case, so you can use a pen as a kickstand, which is perfect if you want to show your synth off or put it on display somewhere. And I know I definitely want to show mine off. The circuit board is so charismatic, everything from the vertically mounted resistors to the clusters of small circuits all arranged individually make for a really good looking synthesizer. Plus, it's always cool to show off something you built, and being able to see the circuit through the acrylic panel is a really nice touch. If you're interested in buying a Poly 555 or just learning a little bit more about it, you can find a link to the Oskitone site in the description of this video. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing. 